Good morning. I'm up here overlooking Beaver Canyon, and I'm going to stop for a moment and talk about an anime, Gunbuster. Gunbuster is an anime title that's dear to the hearts of many older anime fans. It was created over 20 years ago by then young studio Gynax. It's a sci-fi mecha action melodrama told with its tongue in cheek and a twinkle in its eye. In the distant future, alien space monsters are attacking Earth colonies on distant planets outside the solar system, and a war is therefore erupting. <laughs> These huge, malevolent, organic space monsters will swarm in incredible numbers and inexorably draw near to humanity's homeworld, planet Earth. The central character, Noriko, is a young recruit in the Space Cadet program, and she's there to learn to fly one of the mecha that's used to combat the space monsters. At this point in the beginning of the story, where Noriko's friend Kimiko is encouraging her, Gunbuster is a comedic parody of sports stories in general and the anime aimed for the ace in particular. But with more jiggling breasts than we usually see in this genre. Her father was a famous admiral, killed in a fight earlier with the Space Invaders. Unfortunately, Noriko isn't terribly good at it. Frustrated and teased, we're going to see a lot of crying early on. She also gets some encouragement from the best student in the class, Amano. Despite Noriko's seeming incompetence, the coach at the Space Academy believes in her and insists on coaching her privately. The plot follows Noriko's training. And so we get the Rocky montage. And the scenes of the mecha doing push-ups are just hilarious. Later on, as the series moves into outer space, we get a little more serious and a little more fan service. But the series is always quite tongue-in-cheek and never takes itself too seriously, even at the height of its melodrama. Soviet Younger anime fans can go look up Soviet Union on Wikipedia while I sit here and feel old. The third pilot that will be introduced is young Freud. She's from, apparently, the Soviet bloc. It'll take a while for this rivalry to sort itself out. As the series moves along, different relativistic effects are going to make the characters age differently. So we'll get to see Amano as older while Noriko stays young. And when Noriko goes back to Earth for high school graduation, of all things, she meets a much older Kimiko, who was her friend at the training academy. This series combines an awful lot of elements. It starts off as a parody of a sports anime, an underdog story. Sports competition and budding romance. Mecha and fan service. Huge space battles, tragedy and pathos. Hashim! And plenty of cheesy, over-the-top heroic melodrama supported beautifully by Hideo Tanaka's rousing score. And yes, eventually we will have ultimate confrontations with the space aliens. With the sixth and final episode rendered in letterboxed black and white. And it has a touching denouement. 
It's hard to explain why, but this series is just plain fun to watch. It's got good animation, a really kitschy plot line that goes from comedy to melodrama in the space of a few beats, and it has an incredible exuberance to it. For nostalgic reasons alone, I'm going to give it five stars. And I should mention these silly little chibi science lessons that come with each episode. I wouldn't use this material on a test unless the subject was obscure Blade Runner references. Gunbuster is an anime title that's dear to the hearts of many older anime fans. It was created 20 years ago by Studio Gainax, and Hideaki Anno went on to make Evangelion slightly thereafter. When it was released in the U.S., it was a bit of a milestone because along with Great Dan Gaio, it was the first title released in its original Japanese form with a simple translation on a series of three VHS tapes. Twenty years on, Bandai has re-released the title finally on DVD in the U.S. It's subtitled only and it has a buster price. Thanks for listening.